Hello everybody. Welcome to the next lecture from AAT Learning Hub. This week we are going to deal with the cardiac cycle and learn about how each part of the heart synchronously coordinates to pump blood. Cardiac cycle is a sequential event that occurs in the heart during each heartbeat that is cyclically repeated. It includes contraction and relaxation of both the atria and the ventricles along with the opening and closure of the heart valves allowing blood to be pumped through the heart into the body. I hope all of you got a chance to listen to my previous lecture on heart anatomy because that's going to be the foundation of this lecture. If you haven't, I strongly suggest that you pause now and circle back to that video from our channel to brush up the heart anatomy. Well, historically, when one talks about the cardiac cycle, this complex vigorous diagram is flashed with so many waveforms and the seemingly random names of umpteen phases of the cardiac cycle. It is one of the most intimidating diagrams that students encounter in the study of physiology and it always seems really overwhelming, leaving many of the students confused and annoyed. However, what if I tell you that we can actually understand the cardiac cycle without such complexities by breaking it down into just four phases? Yes, you heard that right. Let's unravel the cardiac physiology and make sense of the cardiac cycle. Before we dive into our core topic, there are a couple of concepts that we need to be clear with. Heart movement consists of systole and diastole, which refers to contraction and relaxation. Contraction is squeezing, so S for systole. Relaxation is letting go of the squeeze and getting back to the original shape that is diastole. The second concept is that blood always flows from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure. With the understanding of these two concepts, let's get started with decoding the cardiac cycle. To make it really simple to understand, the four phases of the cardiac cycle can be named as atrial systole, ventricular systole, atrial diastole, and ventricular diastole. However, these phases are not distinctly demarcated. They overlap and each phase is divided into subphases with specific cardiac activity. At the beginning of the cardiac cycle, both the atria and the ventricles are relaxed, that is, they are in diastole. Blood flows into the right atrium from the superior and the inferior vena cava, as well as the coronary sinus, and into the left atrium from the four pulmonary veins. The two atrioventricular valves, the tricuspid and the mitral valves, are both open, so blood flows unimpeded from the atria into the ventricles. Approximately 70 to 80 percent of the ventricular filling occurs by this method. The two semilunar valves, the pulmonary and the aortic valves, are closed, preventing backflow of blood. The cardiac cycle starts with atrial systole. As the atrial muscles contract, pressure rises within the atria and blood is pumped into the ventricles through the open atrioventricular valves, namely the tricuspid and the mitral valves. Atrial contraction, also referred to as the atrial kick, contributes to the remaining 20 to 30 percent of the blood flow. Atrial systole ends prior to ventricular systole as the atrial muscle returns to diastole and blood flows into the atria. This is the shortest phase of the cardiac cycle. Ventricular systole is made up of three phases. Initially, as the muscles in the ventricles contract, the pressure of blood within the chamber rises, but it is not yet high enough to open the semilunar valves. However, blood pressure quickly raises above that of the atria that are now relaxed and in diastole. This increase in pressure causes blood to flow back toward the atria, closing the tricuspid and the mitral valves, producing the first heart sound. Since blood is not being ejected from the ventricles at this early stage, the volume of blood within the chamber remains constant. This initial phase of ventricular systole is known as isovolumetric contraction. Subsequently, ventricular pressure exceeds arterial pressure, thus opening the semilunar valves and allowing blood to be ejected into the arteries. This is the rapid ejection phase and is then followed by a brief slow ejection phase. The atrial diastole overlaps with ventricular systole and most part of the ventricular diastole and hence is the longest phase of the cardiac cycle. In the early part of this phase, the atrioventricular valves are closed and blood gradually pools in the atria. Ventricular diastole consists of five subphases. Ventricular pressure drops below the arterial pressure, causing the semilunar valves to close. 
but the atrioventricular valves remain closed as well, resulting in a brief period of relaxation with no change in the volume. The phase immediately preceding this phase is called the protodiastole. By the way, the closure of the semilunar valves causes the second heart sound. Ventricular pressure drops further, going below the atrial pressure, causing the atrioventricular valves to open and blood flows from the atria into the ventricles, filling them passively. Blood flows from the major veins into the relaxed atria and from there into the ventricles. This is followed by a phase of slow filling called diastasis. Both chambers are in diastole, which we discussed a few minutes back. The atrioventricular valves are then open and the semilunar valves remain closed. The cardiac cycle is now complete. The last phase of the ventricular diastole, that is the rapid active filling of the ventricle, coincides with the atrial systole and the rhythmic cycle continues. How long does a cardiac cycle last? It is calculated as one heartbeat divided by heart rate, which on an average we know is 72 beats per minute. So 1 divided by 72 is 0 0.013 minutes, which multiplied by 60 is 0.8 seconds. So the time lapse between one heartbeat and the next beat is 0.8 seconds. The duration of each phase in the cardiac cycle can vary slightly among individuals and under different conditions. However, here are approximate durations for each phase and can be influenced by factors such as heart rate, cardiac health, and physical activity level. Visualizing the cardiac cycle as a rhythmic dance can make it more engaging and memorable. For atrial systole, imagine the atria are dancers gracefully moving in unison, symbolizing their contraction to push blood into the ventricles. For ventricular systole, picture the ventricles as powerful dancers executing synchronized movements to pump blood out of the heart with strength and precision. For diastole, visualize a brief interlude where the, all the dancers pause, taking a moment to rest and prepare for the next sequence. For the atrial filling, see the atria gently swaying as they welcome the incoming flow of blood akin to dancers gracefully gliding into position for their next step in the routine. And that brings us to the end of this lecture. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe to our channel for more such content. So that was cardiac cycle decoded in just over five minutes. Art is such a miraculous organ, isn't it? I hope it was easy peasy to understand just as I promised in the beginning. Please feel free to share your comments, thoughts and suggestions. We so look forward to hearing from you. I do believe you guys are hungry for more learning because there's lots more coming your way from our channel. Join us next week for yet another lecture. Until then, Stay focused and stay curious. Bye-bye.